Hi again, guys. So um, I hope that everything is going well with the uh, real conditional things. I hope uh, you are getting it and you're not having any problems with it because today things get real. Today, get ready for learning some new things. The previous videos were some reviews, right, for things that you probably already knew. But today, let's talk about the unreal conditionals. Why do we call them unreal conditionals? Because we are talking about things that are not true. Okay, things that live only like in our dreams, in our hopes, in our wishes. And uh, we are just hypothesizing about what would be the result. But I mean, this is just an exercise of fantasy because in reality, those things don't exist. So when you want to talk about a hypothetical situation, we use this form of conditional. So again, I give you second conditional because in this case, I mean, those names are only a guide, are only made up. You will see why. But well, this conditional, we use them, this form, this structure, we use them for a hypothetical situation in the present. What do I mean? I mean, I am talking about uh, something that I am fantasizing about, I am dreaming about now, okay? For example, this is like the example by excellence of the second conditional. If I had money, I would buy a hybrid car. I mean, we all wish to have money. The reality is that we don't, right? But we are hypothesizing. If I had if I say if I had money, I mean, what I am saying is I don't have money and I wish I had some money, right? So when we are hypothesizing of something that we wish to do or we wish to have or we wish to be right now, this is a structure to use. If I had money, I would buy a hybrid car, for example, okay? The same with the other conditionals. You can put them the other way around. First, the result. I would buy a hybrid car if I had money. Remember that in this case, you have to forego the comma and just write it like that. I would buy a hybrid car if I had money, right? Okay, so now attention to structure. How can I express a hypothetical situation in the present? First of all, the conditional, it's going to be conjugated in a tense that is very, very similar to simple past. So you are going to conjugate the verb into simple past and that in Spanish it's going to be something like si tuviera, si fuera, si quisiera, etc. So that is the conjugation that we are looking for, okay? So you're going to conjugate your verb into the simple past, not to complicate your life, and the result is the one that it has multiple options, okay? Well, actually, three options. That's it. No more. Okay? So, the first one, the most common one, is with modal verb would. Okay? I would buy a car. In Spanish, it would be like compraría. But you can also use the modal could for possibility. I could buy a car. Podría comprar. Or you can use the modal of probability might. I might buy a car. And if you remember when we study models uh, of probability, models of deduction, might is like a 50-50 possibility. Podría o quizás compraría. Okay? I might buy a hybrid car. So in this case, those expressions are not synonyms. They have like a little different uh, meaning if you use them all. I would buy is something that I would surely do if the conditional were real. I could means that I will have the possibility. ¿Quién sabe si lo haría? Pero podría hacerlo, tendría la posibilidad de. Y I might buy a car, it's like quizá lo haría, quizá no, right? So depending on what you want to express, right, is the one that you are going to be using. So that is for second conditional, that is for a hypothetical situation in the present okay something i am like dreaming hypothesizing that my, my life were like now 
For example, I could also say, if we were not quarantined, if we were not, simple past, right? If we were not quarantined, I would visit my friends. I would go out, uh, I don't know, to the shopping mall. I would go to the cinema. I could travel, etc. We are hypo hypothesizing about things right now. Yes? Okay. Just one more thing that I want you to pay attention to. Um, careful when you are using the verb to be. Because we say, when we are talking about the conditional, of course, if I were the leader of my community, obviously, I mean, that's a hypothetical situation because I'm not the leader of my community, right? I'm just a teacher. So if I were the leader of my community, what it says right here, it's I would legislate. Sorry if I cover it. If I were the leader of my country, I would legislate laws to protect the environment. What is different? What do you notice? That the verb to be is not conjugated as it should in the present, in the past. Simple, right? You know that the verb to be is I was, you were. What happens here? Uh, it's that all the verb to be, all the time, it doesn't matter of the subject. When we are talking about a conditional, it's going to be conjugated as in where, okay? If I were, if you were, if she were, if they were, if we were, okay? Verb to be in conditional gets conjugated like where all the time, okay? Well, now let's move to the other form of unreal conditional that people call third conditional. What's with the third conditional? Third conditional is still a hypothetical situation, but a hypothetical situation in the past, okay? A hypothetical situation in the past. I am not fantasizing about my life now, but I am imagining something that already happened and what could have happened, okay? For example, if we had been more careful, we could have, sorry, have, avoided the extinctions of many animals. When, I mean, a long time ago, you know, animals have been gotten extinct for a long time. But if in the past, before those animals were extinct, if we had been more careful, we could have avoided the extinction of many animals. In this case, I am dreaming, I am hypothesizing about something that already happened, okay? So, these are the three forms of conditional. Let's analyze the structure of this one. And when I am hypothesizing about the past, about something that is not happening right now, but in the past, we use a different structure. Instead of simple past for the conditional, for the red one, we use past perfect. Remember past perfect? Auxiliary half in past and the verb in past participle. So nos queda if I... If we had been, si hubiéramos sido, okay, more careful. And for the result, we have again the three possibilities, las que ya vimos para el segundo condicional, would, could, or might. But after that, we use auxiliary, have, and the verb in past participle. We could have avoided hubiésemos podido evitar, okay? So in this case, I mean, we add this form to indicate that is the past. We could have avoided, we would have avoided, we may have avoided. Let's, let's do an easier example. For example, if I had woken up early today, I could have exercised. I am hypothesizing about something in the past. I mean, because I'm talking about the morning. Ya no me levante temprano, ya no se pudo ejercitar, right? So that is the third conditional or the other form of unreal conditional, okay? So in the next video, prepare for the big revelation, okay?